Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit Organization. The purpose of our organization is to create a comprehensive solution. We're creating a comprehensive solution that addresses all of the challenges of our generation and generations to come simultaneously because we see them as interdependent. They are interdependent. And what this means is food, energy, housing, education, social injustice and inequality, recreation models, self-governance models, resource-based economy models, all of this stuff put together to build teacher demonstration communities, villages, and hubs to be built all around the world. And ultimately what this means is we are designing solution models purposed to teach other people how to create additional solution creating models. A self-propagating system designed to really do what's possible. To look at the way that we're living right now and to work to the absolute best of our ability to create a comprehensive solution for the highest good of all life on this planet and to open source and free share the model to build a teacher demonstration model that people can come and visit and they will be able to take every aspect of what it is that we do for free and be able to take those blueprints, free shared and open source blueprints and duplicate them, use them in the way that they want either individually or to build complete teacher demonstration communities, villages and cities uh, to teach additional other people how to build them as well all around the world. And so this is our purpose, to make that as easy as possible, to make it as affordable as possible, and to make it as attractive as possible. And so this is our weekly update, weekly video update number 35, and it's covering our progress for the week of October 21st, 2013. If you want to see pictures, as always, if you'd like to see pictures, if you'd like to see links and have access to everything that's talked about in this video, the way to do that is to go to our written blog, and the way to get to the written blog specifically for this video is in the YouTube video description. You'll see a link down there and you can click on that link and that will take you directly to the written blog that has all the details for everything that I'm talking about and uh, links into the website for all the open source content. You can see all the work and all the amazing stuff that we're, that we're getting done. So without further ado, uh, the format as always, I'm going to go through a bullet point list of everything that we've accomplished in the last week, which is a ton. And then I'll come back around and I'll talk in detail about all of those things. So the overview is uh, in this last week, we've got, uh, we're working on a large scale Aquapini and Wallapini roof details, the purchasing details for how the materials that are going to be used to build the roofs for uh, those structures. And so in this last week, we continue to do research on plastic. We know that we're going to use polycarbonate plastic unless something better comes along, but we've done, you know, weeks of research on this. So going with that. And uh, what we're doing now is we're researching the specific sizes on that, and we're also looking at uh, the other materials that we're going to use for building that roof, comparing aluminum to steel, etc. So we've got a bunch of work done on that. We haven't totally finalized that, but we're moving forward. Um, we've also got the rabbits and chickens pages are now up. Rabbits and chickens are two animals that we will um, raise for food on the property, and so we've got two pages to discuss how that fits in with our highest good of all philosophy. Um, what that means because we've got vegetarians and vegans on our team as well. So those two pages are up. Uh, Zenapini 1, the Zen Aquapini 1 plants are now complete on the website. So you can see detailed descriptions of all those up on the website. Earthbag Village Central Layout is now done. Uh, for the most part, we've got some fine tuning and stuff to do, but you can see what that looks like thanks to the great work of Devin Porter. Uh, we've got the Earthbag Village, which is also pod 1. Uh, the Earthbag Village Furniture. Uh, designs. One of the furniture designs is pretty thoroughly long. It's almost done. I'll put up some pictures. We'll put up some pictures for that as well so you can see what that looks like. Um, Sago Center Duplicable City Hub. We got the bathrooms in 3D. Uh, the primary preparatory areas and serving areas are all done now in 3D. So we'll share that. And the Education for Life program. We have finished the core subject template, which goes along with the mind map template, which is also done. And we are now in the process, well, we finished all the details for math, for the subject of math, and now we're looking at social sciences, and we're working on that. And uh, this last week also, we did uh, two, different, two different shows, one on Midwest Reel, and the other one on Modern Healthy Caveman. And uh, two different shows just talking about one community and comprehensive solution. What it is that we're doing. So that's the overview of what we've accomplished. Oh, and uh, one other thing. We also got um, 
all of the uh, purchasing details for where you would purchase all the plants for the food forest is also done. Almost forgot that one. So um, now let me talk in detail about all that different stuff and what's going on. Uh, back to the top of the list, large-scale aquapenium wallapenium roof design. I got a new image for that, just kind of showing how we're looking at that. And we're looking at standard size beams and we're looking at standard size polycarbonate panels. And where you purchase these, there's different different sizes everywhere. And so it's a process of researching because it's not really a standard size that's available. Some companies will uh, cut them to order, whatever size you want. And so the research that we're doing now is we're calling up companies and asking them, hey, what are the standard sizes? What's shipping on that? What are the difference? And we're just, you know, tackling all the problems around this idea of picking what's easiest, what's the easiest material to work with, what's the most sustainable material to work with, what's the most affordable material to work with, and you know, and then what are the specific sizes that make the most sense to work with because of the way that we need to seal it and the insulation properties and all that. What what materials on the inside make the most sense so uh, we can have those foundations done because we're doing a real push right now for engineers. We're looking for engineers that would like to donate their time to our organization and be a part of creating this comprehensive solution. And so we found that it's most beneficial to have all our ducks in line and all those details complete. Uh, so when we finally find the engineer that is willing to donate their time and help us create this and do the engineering, we have a real solid starting point as far as those materials go. And then we can design with that in mind, you know, and change it if we need to, but we're getting those foundations in place. So um, that's the big one for large-scale aquapini uh, and the wallapini as far as moving forward on that. And then we finished all the plants for so, uh, all the zen, for the zenapini. So uh, zen aquapini number one, as I've said in other videos, the purpose of this is to build a backyard structure that is far superior as far as the efficiency and the effectiveness and the beauty of it and the functionality of it to a traditional greenhouse because it's built in the ground. And then what we've done is we've sourced these amazing plants to essentially somebody that wanted to grow a diversity of food that is far superior to what you can buy in the grocery store. Not only just in the quality because it's right there and it's fresh and you can get it in your backyard, but also because of the diversity of what it is that you can grow. Um, we want to demonstrate something that is really, really attractive to people that are interested in their health. A lot of these plants have amazing medicinal benefits and health benefits to them. And so uh, if you want to see just a mind-blowing selection of wonderful plants and beautiful plants, check out the Zanapini One plants, which are now all up on the website. All those details are up, and um, they're just it's just a phenomenal amount of work. It's hundreds of hours of work that's gone into that, and you'll see images, you'll see complete descriptions, you'll see planting and placement guidelines in there, and then links to additional information as well, as all as well as purchasing information for everything that you see on there, where you can purchase that to duplicate it. So it's a great example of our open source model and how this fits into the comprehensive solution. You know, we don't just want to demonstrate sustainable food. We want to revolutionize the food industry as a whole. We want to put the power of diverse nutrition back in the hands of people. We want to influence the industry to go back to a world where we have a diversity of apples that are available. We want to expand the concept of what it is that people want. Because if we do this, the market will adapt. And so we're promoting biological diversity and plant diversity. We're promoting food diversity. We're promoting nutritional diversity. We're obviously promoting organic food. Um, and we're also promoting food self-sufficiency and self-sustainability, but with a model that could easily be uh, capitalized upon. People could build and they could start taking these foods to their, selling them to local grocery stores. They could start selling them to at local farmers markets, things that a lot of people have never heard of that are just amazing, mind-blowing foods. Uh, and eventually we'll be adding in recipes and everything from the property on how to use these foods, how to combine these foods, and all the research that will go into also, you know, into how to hybridize these different plants and things like that, and really what's possible. So it's a big component of our stewardship model, this Zenapini One, and showing people how to duplicate that, and then teaching the open source botanical garden model that goes along with that too for people that really want to take it to the next level and to be able to contribute seeds to things like our partners with the Seed Savers uh, organization. 
and others like that, spreading heirloom seeds and helping to get this stuff out even more and more and more so people have access to amazing tomatoes and amazing, you know, broccoli and amazing, just amazing foods, some of the standard foods as well. They're a little bit more diverse than you see in most grocery stores. So Xanapini 1 plants are done. Uh, the other thing that I said that we did as far as food infrastructure goes is we have, um, we've completed all the research for where to purchase everything for the outdoor plantings as well. So the food forest uh, on our property, the food forest will be, will be uh, hundreds of acres. And uh, what we're growing outside is as diverse as what we're growing inside. The same idea of promoting plant diversity and creating a whole ecosystem outside. And so the food forest right now, we have over 290, almost 300 plants listed on the food forest and so behind the scenes we've done all the research on where you would purchase all those plants the main uh, all the nurseries are where you'd be able to find this diversity and so we've just got some organization to do as far as making it a little bit more user friendly because we've got all the data done and then we'll put that up on the website hopefully this week if not this week definitely next week so uh, in addition to that uh, I mentioned we've got our rabbits and the chickens pages are up so um, this is a touchy subject. I mean, we've got vegans and we have vegetarians on our team. And so it was a lot of discussion about, you know, how, how do you, for people that are vegans and vegetarians, um, you know, how is eating animals at all for the highest good of all? You know, and as an organization that is really sensitive to ideology and, and purposed not to be an ideological organization, ultimately what we realized is, um, long term, it looks like raising animals for food is here to stay. It's going to be here for a long, long time. And so we see our as our part of our highest good approach uh, to really demonstrating ethical animal husbandry, the um, ethical and sensitive raising of animals, the honoring, the gratitude, the love for these living creatures um, that we're raising for food. And so that is an aspect that we are going to demonstrate an open source share as part of One Community too. And there's a lot of really beautiful ethical raising of animals for food that's happening right now. We understand that not everybody agrees with it at all. There's a lot of ideology out there that says, hey, we shouldn't do this at all. Um, as realists, we realize though that it's continuing to happen on this planet. And, and we see an opportunity to really, really provide some powerful and positive insight into how to do this in a way that um, could really make a difference in the lives of these animals and, and, um, and bring more public attention to what's possible, what, how this can be done for people that, that absolutely will never choose to go vegetarian and definitely not choose to go vegan. And then saying, okay, well, if you're gonna do this, you know, here's the way to do it that's really um, respectful of what it is that's happening. And so the rabbits and the chickens pages, we've put those pages up. They discuss uh, some of what it is that we're talking about. They discuss and give some examples of ethical ways of harvesting animals for food and what that looks like and uh, just kind of our approach on that. And so we're excited to have those pages up as always. Uh, if you want to read those pages, well, those are easy. OneCommunityGlobal.org forward slash rabbits or OneCommunityGlobal.org forward slash chickens. If you want to see the botanical garden model, OneCommunityGlobal.org forward slash botanical gardens. Um, and there's a hyphen in between there. So check those things out. So we're happy to have those up. Um, also, so I was talking about uh, from a comprehensive solution looking at highest good housing. So the first village model that we'll be building is the Earthbag Village because it's the most affordable, uh, half a million dollars, and you can build housing for 100 people. That's what we're shooting for. We're still working out some of the final details, but we're pretty comfortable that we'll be able to come in under that mark for that. So, uh, and what we have now is you can see the central layout. So it's 75, actually it's grown from 75 to 77 structures. And uh, of those 77 structures, there's two rings, a central ring and an outer ring. And you can see all that in 3D now, thanks to the ongoing work of Devin Porter, who is just a wizard in creating this in SketchUp, which is the program that we're using because it's, uh, it's free to use and people, anybody can have access to it because we want to put this in the hands of people in a way that can be modified by anybody. And so um, we're super excited to be able to share those images and what that looks like. And now we're starting to do some of the fine tuning on it. There's still some other details, but we can start putting in plants and other aspects to that model as well. And so I'll put some pictures, uh, we'll have some pictures up on the website for that as well. 
Um, and then also in the Earthbag Village, thanks to the amazing work of Philip Gill, uh, we have new images to share for the uh, designs, the internal designs of these houses and what it looks like, how to maximize this inter internal space. And these houses, because our goal are on, the, on these homes is, remember we're talking about the solution to the comprehensive solution, we're redefining for people who are ready for this, we're redefining how people live. And these homes are being repurposed so that they're really the place that you go to get away, the place that you go for sleeping, the place that you go for intimacy. But the homes themselves are very small because we have the Sago Center, which is a duplicable city hub that's designed to provide really beautiful and open spaces, recreational spaces, how, uh, laundry for 300 plus people, as well as um, uh, group dining for 150 plus people at a time, you know, really beautiful space. So we've now got these furniture updates that are done showing how you can maximize a 200 square foot footprint, build in a second floor within these domes because they're 16 feet high. That's the way the earth bag domes are being done. And you can build these little homes as like a guest house or whatever you want uh, for, or as a living residence, like we are for, for one community uh, for under $5,000 a piece. So really, really something. And, you know, and then you put in this furniture. So we have furniture designs that maximize that space, make it really beautiful. The reason for the small footprint is because in most counties, you'll be able to build something like this without a permit so people can start building sustainable infrastructure. This stuff will last 500 years. And these things are more resistant to pretty much everything. You can drive a truck into most of them because it's like building a concrete structure when you use earth bag construction. It's just absolutely amazing. And so um, Philip Gill has finished up uh, our, well, he's almost finished. We're still doing some fine tuning on that too, but enough to where you can really see what it's starting to look like as far as the designs for that furniture, which is a Murphy bed. So you have a Murphy bed that folds down and then folds up. And when you fold it up, a little desk pops out below that. And then you have his and hers closet that you walk around behind. And those are separate uh, there. And then you have a little ladder that will lead up to a, a loft area that could be for storage, it could be a kid's room. Um, really cool, super efficient use of space that also makes the space easier to heat, um, easier to cool, and so um, just really pretty, pretty cool. So excited to share that stuff with you. And then I said the Sago Center, I started talking about the Sago Center, uh, the duplicable city hub. We've made a whole bunch of progress in this last week on that as well and that we have finished in 3D thanks to the great work of Carl Harris and Jen Hua on our team has done some amazing work, uh, continue to do amazing work on that. And what we've got now is we have the, uh, the bathroom and the dining dome is done in 3D. We have the primary preparation food prep area is done as well as the uh, primary serving counter and area is all done. So that's a big slice of the Sago Center uh, coming along and so you can see what this duplicable city hub is all about and how it fits into the comprehensive solution you start visualizing like oh okay feeding 150 people in a building like this like, wow that would be a mind-blowingly beautiful and amazing place to eat and it replaces kitchens in all of these other homes and all these other homes you no longer need a kitchen in any of these homes because instead you have a group communal kitchen and it saves time, it saves resources, saves tons of money, and not just in the construction aspect, but also just in the food production aspect, in the waste. It saves so much waste because now what you're doing is large-scale preparation of food for people. You know, and instead of you instead of having 50 families sitting around and each making their own individual meals, instead you have a small group of people, maybe five or ten, maybe even just five, probably five would be sufficient preparing enough food for 100 people. And it's just amazingly beautiful food that's prepared with love, it's prepared with intent, it's prepared with a huge investment of time instead of somebody just making a sandwich or you know throwing something on the grill, although that's a possibility too, you know, or doing a stir fry. Instead, you make this huge you know, feast, this banquet. And why do you do it? Well, because it only takes four or five people working together to do that. Instead of 50 people, you can put your resources in that and you have this big dining hall to enjoy that. And then the next day, somebody else who really loves to cook would put that time and energy in. Imagine what that could do. It change the way that we look at food and eating and dining. In today's world where a lot of families never even sit down to eat together, to 
be able to sit down as a community. For people who want to eat on their own, you can take your food and go sit outside and watch the sunset off the patio there. Or you could go sit in the forest and eat, or you could take your food back to your little your private residence and do that instead. All these different, you know, the, the options are all there, but this whole model is built around the Sago Center and redefining the way that people live and, and uh, bringing the resources where they're needed. It's all part of the comprehensive solution. So exciting to see that stuff moving along. Um, also, I mentioned that the Education for Life program has also made great progress in the last week. So we have finished the course subject template. It took three redesigns on that. We designed it, didn't like it, scrapped that, designed it again, didn't like it, scrapped it again. And so finally, the final model of this, which is a circular design for each of the subjects. So you've got math, science, social sciences, English, music, and um, music and art. Uh, each of those health and fitness and then values also. Each one of those subjects has its own template. And within that, so we finished the general template, like what it's going to look like from an from a empty standpoint. And now what we're doing is we're doing all the research to fill that in. So we've got a picture that we'll post for that as well as far as what that looks like so you can see it developing and then we've finished, we've pretty much finished math which is probably the most complex of all of these to do because when you take it, you take something like math that has so many different elements to it and put it in this this circular structure like that, what we've been doing is we've been looking at what it would look like on the timeline from learning numbers, how to count, to complex calculus and engineering, that kind of stuff. How do you structure that and then putting that in a timeline and then breaking it up into seven different levels and putting it in a circle like this so that there's kind of a rhyme and a reason to how it expands so that now students can move around and learn in a nonlinear, more comprehensive fashion. And so I could go on and on about this, but it's a it could be a, you know it could be an hour blog in and of itself, so I won't. But uh, you can take a look at that image and see what that looks like. And then behind the scenes, we've gotten all that math done. We're starting to work on social sciences. And hopefully this week, well, and then we're starting to look at how we can make this image really user-friendly with icons that represent larger topics and subjects and ideas, and then individual words that represent subjects and ideas within the subject that can be represented that way. And then all this is going to tie together with mind maps that we have that are weekly themes that then you teach all these different subjects within. And so you've got the big subject that goes with that, and then you've got, you've got the subject like math, and it fits within underneath the heading of something like summer or space or the human body. And then that would be the weekly theme. And so all this stuff is coming together. We've done a huge amount of work on it. It just continues, and um, you know we'll develop it as soon as we can get one finished. I can't wait to put it up. It's going to take some time because if we want to do lots of icons to make it really visually appealing. And then the way that it'll work is as students complete things, they'll earn points, essentially. Like there could be a kind of a point system that would keep track of all this. And you'd be checking off the different areas that are complete. And so your comprehensive approach to math is that when it's done, everybody should understand calculus. But you don't necessarily have to learn it in this linear fashion that we've been doing uh, traditionally with education. Instead, you could learn this in a little bit more um, comprehensive approach where you might be learning calculus concepts if children are ready for them, depending, no matter where they are in their educational process. If they're ready and they're willing and they want to, and we can make it fun enough. And this idea is built on the idea that we can get rid of desks for the most part and make it all very hands-on. So everything has a why, which is what that mind map is all about. It's addressing the very foundations of education and saying, hey, you know, let's look at how we would learn if we were dropped into a completely foreign culture as an adult. Let's look at how we like to learn as adults with immersive experiences where the information that we need is there. And we can take that knowledge and we can apply it in a useful and interesting way on the spot and then get hands-on experience and how that hands-on experience is going to then translate into a more comprehensive learning experience uh, that will stick better because it makes sense. And so uh, it's pretty exciting to see all this stuff come along. So I'll put that up and you can take a look at what that image looks like and uh, you'll see this continue to develop over the next few weeks because we're moving along super, super fast. Uh, last couple things that I wanted to report on where uh, we did two different radio shows uh, this last week on one community. One was on Midwest Real, and the other one was on Modern Healthy Caveman. Um, both great shows if you want to check those out. Uh, links will be in the written blog, 
and you can see what that is all about. And um, that's about it. So moving forward, you know, I just want to wrap up on the comprehensive solution and say that uh, not only are all of these things interconnected, I think we all know that. And I think we know that food, energy, and housing, and education, and social injustice, and equality, and crime, and health care, all of these things, poverty, all of these things are interrelated. So what's what we think is maybe maybe even more important than addressing those things is that in the way that we're addressing those things, the way that we're addressing those things is to address the very foundations of the policy making that surrounds those things. We're addressing the very core, the essence of those aspects of society, those aspects of civilization, and saying, okay, if we comprehensively address those elements and simultaneously connect all these things and we tie it in with fulfilled living and happiness, creating happier, more whole people, and we teach them how to do all this together and we make it affordable enough, make it easy enough, we make it attractive enough, this idea will become self-replicating and spread across the world, spread, spread across the globe, teaching more and more people how to do these things and bringing the resources where they're needed most, but more importantly, addressing the very essence, the very hub, the central core of where policy is being made, where the decisions that are affecting the lives of millions of people are coming from by taking off some of the pressure because it really, really is a solution to a lot of these problems, especially in third world countries, by taking private money. So instead of it being a handout or a government or an organization, although they, all those organizations could use this as well, it's really about getting mainstream public. It's about getting regular people with average means and, uh, and, and a desire to create a better life for themselves, to invest their money in infrastructure that gives more than it takes, to start redesigning this, to create something that in disaster areas you could go in and rebuild sustainable infrastructure and completely revolutionize that area and transform it if people are ready and willing. And our goal is to make it affordable enough, easy enough, and attractive enough so that people are willing, so people want to do that, to create an education program that can be used in a traditional system, but it can also be used in a third world country where something like that doesn't even exist, and not only to create an educational program that can be used in that system, but to bring electricity to the areas where they need it so people have computers, to bring sustainable housing to areas where people don't have it so that people have houses that will last for hundreds of years instead of houses that are just falling apart and are literally dangerous to live in, you know, and sustainable housing, housing built with materials that aren't toxic, built with materials that are of the earth and are renewable. So to bring sustainable energy to those areas, funded not by major corporations, although they could, the idea with this is to make it so attractive and profitable, the for-profit aspect of it, that it would be wonderful to see large-scale uh, big corporations putting huge amounts of money into this and funding it and then we would be able to provide the people we would be able to direct the people to the organizations that want to do this and want to set these things up people that are looking to start a new life and want to be the labor force to create these homes and know that they're going to own a home just like they do with one community where after 18 months of, of investing time and energy on the property and building the person owns the home that they help build models like that could spread across the world as well where major corporations who want to do a good thing and really help people out could provide an opportunity for people to own a home in a way that they never could otherwise. How amazing would that be? Or for people to be able to liquidate homes that they're living in right now and instead move into sustainable infrastructure like this because they never have to work a traditional job another day in their life. Instead, they would run a teacher demonstration community village or city and help teach other people how to do it too. So... This is what we're creating. This is our comprehensive solution. And um, as always, I just want to say thanks for everybody that's following us. The number one way that anybody could help us right now is we're looking for funding to get the property that we've been working with for three years off the market. If anybody knows somebody, you never know who you know. We're looking for one person, really, to invest in one community and help us get that property off the market, either as a donation to our, our 501c3 nonprofit or as an investment in one community that would be paid back. Um, but that would be what helps us most. And of course, it helps if anybody's uh, sharing 
sharing what it is that we're doing. Just subscribing to our YouTube channel is a great show of support. We appreciate that as well. And of course, we're always looking for pioneers, people that want to move onto the property and help us build one community, satellite members, the people that want to build communities elsewhere and would like to be a part of our organization in the inner workings and everything that's happening behind the scenes to bring these open source blueprints to fruition even faster, as well as consultants and partners who want to work with us uh, for the promotional benefits that it gives them for the uh, for the just the positive influence that they're having in the world and with our project and uh, and to be the people that we will refer to as we build one community and people say hey I like what you're doing but I'd like to change it I'd like to do it this way I'd like to do it differently I say great these are the people to talk to because they're the ones who helped us design the original blueprints and they're amazing and they have the most experience with it and they would be the ones to be able to take it to in a different direction if that's your goal so um, those are the folks that we're looking for. Those are the things that will help us out most right now. If you know anybody, by all means, please sharing our stuff on Facebook and Twitter and uh, YouTube and, and uh, just spreading the word is always very much appreciated. And so thanks for all the uh, positive wishes, all the great feelings, and uh, all the wonderful emails that we get of support. It does mean a ton. Posts on our Facebook, just thanks and gratitude on our Facebook means a lot as well. As always, if you want to follow us on Facebook, we got two Facebook pages, facebook.com forward slash uh, one community fans and facebook.com forward slash one community updates. Twitter is one community org. And um, with that, I will say thank you. And until next week, much, much obliged. Appreciate it.